Welcome to A View from the Summit, where we explore the unique relationships between animals and humans, whether it's an Olympic partner or couch buddy, a working companion or unique pet, a world champion or someone you think the world of. Join us for a look at animals in our lives. Brought to you by Summit Animal Health. Hello everyone and welcome to another adventures, another adventure on View from the Summit. You know, uh, we started because we wanted to investigate the relationship that people have with their animals or with animals in general. And sometimes, um, you know, it's people rescuing animals and doing stuff for animals. And then other times like today, we have animals doing extraordinary things for humans. And I'm not gonna say much more because I, I want to, Jennifer to talk to us. So we're gonna go way up north right now to my co-host and yours, Robin Benson, who is just lounging around on the ranch as she always does in the summertime, uh, no doubt smelling of coconut oil and, and Kool-Aid. Robin, right. how are you? How are you? I think you there? got too much sun in your garden today, Steve. <laughs> but that's okay. I'm being outside in the sun, probably not smelling of Kool Aid, but that's all right. <laughs> what would that be that I'm smelling? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, as you guys can all see, we love having fun on this show. It's all about fun and animals in our life. My husband and daughter and I, if you don't know us at this point, we run a working cattle ranch in Northwestern Minnesota. We have a few other odd businesses online, which keep us busy as well. And a very feral child who we love dearly. And our passion is animals. And like Steve said, we started this to share amazing and unique stories of animals and their humans and the way they help and save each other. Our passion is human. And we are noticing more and more that a greater percentage of the population is removed from animals. People are not living around animals. They don't have animals in their day-to-day -day life like we do. And we don't take it for granted. We love it every day. That's why we do what we do. But the opportunity and the gift to share what animals can do to help people is truly amazing. And so every day, every episode, we hear from people all over the country. We hear stories. We hear stories that touch our hearts, stories that touch yours. And we hope today you are watching, listening somewhere out there and it touches yours too. And we can't wait to hear from our guest today. So Steve, let's jump on in. Well, we want to welcome Jennifer Mathis. She is program director with Equine Hope. So Jennifer, I'm just going to say what the heck is going on and what do you do and what is Equine Hope? Well, first I want to say thank you for the opportunity to be here. We're so grateful to showcase what horses can do in our lives. And EquiHope was founded just a few years ago. I'm one of the co-founders. Um, I started working with horses in 2010 in equine therapy, and I just could not believe, like, true miracles, how effective they were for cognitive and physical challenges, from seeing people say their first words to step their first steps. So it's the magic of the horse is truly scientific. Um, as well as emotional, the connection for us humans is just profound. But I'm really excited to share today the spotlight with Ollie and Brian, their parents, and they can share a little bit more about their personal experiences with equine therapy. Well, Alejandro, let's let's start with you and uh -huh. um, hear your story, how you how you benefited or your family benefited from equine therapy. Um, so it started uh, maybe like two years ago. My daughter got anorexia, nerviosa. So she was in the hospital for four months. Uh, she was not eating. She had eating uh, disorder. And she was there for only 25 pounds. Uh, she was 11. And she was about to die. And she had a tube on her nose because she was not eating she had body distortion and, you know, you know, they help her out. But the thing when she was there, she look outside on her on her window and she will see a horse all the time. It's outside the hospital and uh, the horse made her life. 
So she was always telling me about the horse. You know, she would call me all the time, Mom. I see the I saw the horse. You know, the horse is called paint. And she'll tell me stories about the horse because she was for four months there, you know, to get better. So we promised her when she came out, we will go and see the horse. So thanks God, she came out, you know, she started recovering and I started Googling it like, hey, what the horses do, you know, like, do they have therapy or, you know? And uh, so when she came out from the hospital, we went outside, you know, and my husband took her there so she can, you know, see the horse and all that stuff. And I found Jen and Equihope. So they changed her life. Like she's been with them for two years um they help her with her stress you know they help her to feel more secure about herself um she can do a lot of stuff right now miss jen is the best because you know she tells her to be more like independent so you don't even know that's i think she recovered like almost she's like 90 percent recovered um because of miss jen of course and her doctor at the hospital you know um so horses is just she just bought a book to read about horses she loves horses everything that she is around the horses you know she goes and helps miss jen on camps that's her life like that change her thinking the way she cares you know like it's just amazing the way she's you can see her like two years ago and right now her, you know, compromise and the way she talks and it helps her with everything. The horses are a miracle. So she did not have any experience with a horse until she went into the hospital and then just saw them. Yes, correct. That is amazing. And when she, um, what was it like the first day when you took her to Equine Hope and she got to actually be close to a horse. What was that like? She, you don't even know, like her face was just so like emotional and she wanted to be there all the time. And, you know, when she rode, like she rode a horse like few years before, you know, but when she was like little, so it was just experience to just be with the horse and like engage with it. So she was super attached to one horse and like, if someone else will ride that horse, she will be like, that's my horse. You know, like why they're riding it. But, you know, right now she can ride, you can ask Miss Jen, like different horses, you know, they make her, she makes her change, you know, the way she thinks, the way she thinks about herself, you know, it makes that anxiety, like it was like a hundred percent right now, like it's like a 10%. Like, it's just another person. Like, I see her and I'm like, oh, my gosh, is that my daughter? Like, she was super sick and now she's recovered, you know? Like, it's just a lot. And she, she's been interviewed by the news three times, um, you know, because, you know, it was a really, really crazy story about her, you know? And uh, she's been, uh, you know, with them. And, you know, she talked about it, like, a few weeks ago when they have this... Um, uh, thing to open Equihope and you know it's been a lot on her but she's been doing way better that's incredible and I'm a horse person too so I completely feel what you're saying it's beautiful what can happen but for everybody listening and by the way congratulations and kudos to all of you because it takes a team it takes a village for that kind of yes. recovery I have some personal not me but in my family experience with that and it is very difficult but it's hard wow, what a fabulous and miraculous recovery but it can you Ali or Jen explain to our listeners and viewers maybe an example of how you don't have to give details of your daughter per se but what it is like she's sitting on a horse is she riding the horse is she petting the horse is she feeding the horse what is it that helped her and of course it's a evolving right of course the mm. things you do change as she grows and changes and recovers and develops but can you explain a little bit to people listening and watching what it is that you do with the human and the horse combo to help start the recovery or the connection or the healing and I'll leave think, either one of <laughs> I think well I don't I, she's the expert but I think how I saw it is the way you know they interact each other you know so when they pet the horse when they brush the horse when they do like you know rinse the horse you know like just be on you know riding the horse it's just the 
the movement, I don't know exactly what it is, but it's just amazing. Like I enjoy every time that I go, I just enjoy it. I, I just watch her and I, I see her improvements and she's an expert. She's amazing. So I'm so thankful. I always tell them, Hey guys, you got my daughter back. Oh, Ali. we love Isabella. A lot of it is the welcoming uh, environment. So we have a family greeting area. We have a child's play area. So siblings can come play. There's something for everybody to do. It's inclusive. Our goal was to be a community center. And that's a little different than a lot of barns. Barns can be very um, exclusive. You've probably seen that. Um, I wouldn't say posh per se, but just they don't invite everyone to come in. And we do. We try to have a place for everybody in an activity for everybody is our goal. Now, as far as, especially with teen girls and preteen girls, I always say the horse is big and strong. You need to be big and strong too. You need to eat. You need to get stronger because girls, they're not used to taking up space and they really need to. They have an intellect. They have something to offer the world. And they need to showcase it. And sometimes you have to be strong to showcase. You have to have a voice. So talking to them about having boundaries with the horse, communicating with the horse, the horse, the horse uses their body to communicate. And females are often just, again, not taking up space. So when the girls start realizing they have to eat to grow, to be strong enough to handle the horse, it makes them look at food differently as fuel. Um, they look at their body differently. They need to be bigger. They need to be stronger. And so just kind of layering that same message, bigger, stronger, over and over again, encourages them to be more here in the world. And the horses are powerful. They can't ride if they haven't eaten. They just can't keep up with the horse. So there's some inspiration there. And then horses unabashedly eat everything they can get too. So they are inspirational in and of themselves. They know they need to eat. Horses self-care. They put themselves first. So they're a wonderful example. Do you have more than just Isabella has an anorexia, you know, people with anorexia coming? I know it's a much more common issue than people may think. Um, is this something you see a lot? Yeah, we have. We've had a variety of preteen and teen girls come in with immediately you can tell they don't have a sense of self that's confident or um, they're, they're carrying a lot of hurt and they don't know how to get it out safely as setting boundaries is an issue. Um, we all know that animals will push into us if we don't create space. And this is true for dogs, but especially with horses because they're looking at you to set the boundary and they will just keep pushing until you set it. So that automatically is a wonderful biofeedback tool. We teach the riders to lead the horse, groom the horse, handle the horse in a variety of different ways from the groundwork to the riding. And all of it is about got to get stronger. You got to be more clear. Your communication, you can't, a horse cannot read your mind. So you need to say what you want the horse to do and you need to command it. And so with just that exercise over and over again of commanding the horse and communicating to the horse, they become more affirmed that they exist in this world and that they can take up space. So Ali, do you notice your daughter's communication in general improving yes. since yes. she's to stand up to the horses? Yes, like you can ask Miss Jen, like before she was just kicking the horse really like gentle because she was thinking she was hurting the horse. Now she, you know, she does better. So all that and then her communication, you know, the way she talks in public, you know, I, at, at that age, I was not in the news or like I would be scared talking, you know, like and she can talk, you know, and like she will talk just like normal, you know, like is part of her, but she wants to inspire others. She always tells me to help them because she went through a lot at that young age. And uh, so she wants to have them options, you know, so they can recover from that because it's really, really like, you know, hurtful for her. That's great. Well, we've got, we want to, we've got another guest here. So I want to bring him on. We'll just continue this, but I want to hear from Brian. Brian, what's your story? 
So my wife and I have been writing most of our lives, but we wrote Western style. And then we, we adopted our daughter uh, at birth, and she's not ridden before. She loves animals, but she has some of the things that Jen mentioned where she has a little bit lack of focus. Uh, she needs to get stronger, a little more assertive. And Jen's work with her on the groundwork and on writing has demonstrated just that, that she really enjoys working with the horses. Um, she is taken to it quickly. And English writing, which is what they're teaching at Equihope, is much more disciplined, in my opinion, and it's working really well for our daughter. Uh, we met Jen and, and Kent and Brandon, who are her co-owners there at Equihope, and fell in love with the facility, fell in love with the folks, and it, it's kind of been a, a dream come true for Kara and my family. So That's great. Well, you know, when it, when it's time to go for the lesson, do either of you have to beg your daughter to get in the car or are they the first <laughs> no. ones in the car? <laughs> no, at the beginning, I can see the difference because she was not focused. It was like, oh, do I really need to wake up? But now she's just like, okay, I'm ready to go. And she's ready in the car waiting for me. That's excellent. Same here. Say, say, say with you, Brian. So Brian, what yes, mm -hmm. um, you were mentioning lack of focus a little bit and your connections breaking up, we can hear you, but the video is a little delayed. So um, we'll like okay. in between, but um, when you started going and you were talking about focus and assertiveness and what were some things you noticed first that started to change? Like give us some specifics because people are listening with kids who probably are dealing with the same challenges or similar challenges because parents out there you know, parents are always looking for help in different areas and don't always know what to do. And I mean, if you ask me, animals are always the answer, but for, you know, for parents out there who may have an equine therapy program nearby, or maybe could look for one, what are some things you first started to notice? And like when you brought your daughter home, things she would say that you noticed were changing or, you know, just some initial changes. Sure. So specifically working with Jen, she she became a lot more assertive. She would listen, you know, she listens to mom and dad, but because she wanted to learn more about the horses and she was knew that Jen was an expert in the field that she was in, uh, she listened more and was more receptive to that. But what I noticed specifically is her taking a lot more pride, a lot more ownership, if you will, in doing the activities that she was doing. Um, whereas I could come in and try to teach her how to ride, that wasn't a problem. Uh, she was less interested in, in hearing from dad. She definitely wanted to hear from Jen. And uh, that connection with her and the horses, she felt like she was achieving something. So that she went from being someone that was a lot more shy um, and she's not a shy child, but in certain situations, she was very shy and a lot less assertive. She started taking a little bit more control of the animal um, and, and treating the animal correctly and learning the appropriate ways to do things. I think for 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 us, it puts a lot more responsibility on the children to that they learn and they start to become really much more uh, intentional on in what they're doing. And I think that's important too, especially for kids these days. They there may be a lack of focus. This gets them focused and gives them something to want to achieve. And and Equihope definitely and specifically Jen definitely help her get that um, assertiveness and and just uh, confidence to be better. That's so cool. Wait, and in in both of these cases, they had really no. A horse experience prior uh, to going to Equine Hope. Yeah, Jen, no, that Jen, is true for me for sure. Mm -hmm. Jen, why did did you make the choice? Uh, after all, you are in Texas. Why did you choose to ride English as opposed to Western? Uh, it's actually not English. Um, it's perceived as English, but I use dressage saddles and I teach working equitation. So they can, it's a long leg. It's a very balanced 
pose and the posture is very upright. So they can transfer to uh, Western pleasure, barrel racing, hunter jumper, any of those disciplines later on. I'm teaching a functional training session on horseback and it's to engage their core, um, get them to use their body unilaterally, very balanced, is communicating with the horse in a very balanced way and keeping the horse straightness. So the whole entire focus is fundamentally dressage. It's about straightness of the rider and the horse to create balance. Um, this works in uh, not only in the physical realm, but in cognitive, it stimulates the uh, vestibular system. The vestibular system is our balance system. And this also contributes to cognition. They're all linked. Uh, so. For instance, have you ever had a um, an ear infection? Mm -hmm. And were you amazed at how it affected your balance in your everyday, your hearing, your your posture? Absolutely. So the system, yeah, is completely the ears, and that is your key to your balancing your entire body. And so I am treating the clients through accessing the vestibular system using the horse as a modality to get the best out of them and for them. Now, the benefit to this is later on, as I mentioned before, when they go on to the discipline that they pre prefer, they're going to be a really solid rider that stays in the middle of their horse. So what kind of horses do you use, Jen? Are they competition horses? Are they therapy horses? Are they everything horses? Um, just tell us a little bit about the horses because they're a tool, but they're also a partner in what you're doing. Right. So, um, you know, obviously some kids have favorite horses. How many horses do you have? And, um, tell us about these horses. Cause they must be pretty special. I feel like a casting agent and I am looking for the horse that likes people. So they come in all sizes and ages. I have everything from a wonderful eight-year-old Morgan Gelding to ancient horses, which I would say late, they're in the late 20s. And they range in breeds from quarter pony, thoroughbred, Swedish warm blood, um, paint horse, half draft. Um, oh, we do have a uh, Venezuelan polo pony who is an import. Our Swedish warm blood's an import too. And they were both a big dot deal in their day. But now they're with us. I'm looking for horses that, first of all, as I mentioned before, love people because they're going to get a lot of people and they need to be very patient with people. They need to understand that they're helping us. And these horses are like, okay, human. We know you don't know what you're doing, so we're going to help you and we're going to be patient with you, but you need to learn to do it right or I'm not going to cooperate. So I'm going to go eat grass or I'm going to stop or I'm going to back, but I'm, I'm going to wait for you to get it right. And so they're not inclined to take off or overwhelm the rider, but they will push the rider. And I know that Ollie and Brian can both testify to being there on days where the riders didn't get it together and they had to really dig deep to get their communication in order to tell the horse correctly. And I love those moments because those are the moments where the horse is the teacher and they have taken over the lesson and they're like, kid, you're going to get it right. So they're wonderful teachers. Um, what else? So I'm also looking for horses that have really good walks. So, you know, in dressage, that big slinky walk where their hips and shoulders are swinging to and fro. And we really teach that to the horses. If I get a horse that's like a rainer or um, or maybe they did hunter jumper and they're not used to doing that slinky walk, we will work with them until they have it because that walk is so powerful and it moves the body so well that that is what's accessing again. When we talk about the vestibular system and the balance that's working the rider's core so deeply. I use dressage saddles with uh, Werner Christ fleece pads on top so that the rider's comfortable. It's really unfair to take new riders and have them be saddle sore. So we avoid saddle sore as much as possible to give them time to acclimate and build those muscles. I don't want a client unable to walk up a set of stairs after they have a session with me. 
you know, two, three days later, that's when that stiffness sets in. And I'd rather that they have a comfortable experience and grow into the muscles. My goal is to graduate them on to a more uh, advanced program. If possible, I want them to feel like they get success every day. Now, there are definitely some challenges when we are, uh, the rider is maybe not interested in communicating. And again, that's where the horse says the buck stops here. Um, and you need to communicate with me gently, kindly, firmly, clearly. So could, Allie or Brian or both, could you tell us a story about your daughter where you noticed that maybe they weren't, because everybody has an off day, everybody has an on day, but can you tell us a story of how your daughter worked with their horse and Jen helped them work through a sticky spot? Maybe they were having a challenging day. What did that look like? Well, uh, I think the first time that Miss Jen switched to another horse on Isabella it was hard on her because she was really used to magic that she loves and I think that was really challenging because she knew magic for a long time so then she was thinking that the horse is going to listen to her as magic but they're different like us we're different so she was kind of frustrated you can see her in her face and like she was just getting like oh my gosh I'm done with this horse but Miss Jen you know teach her how to finish her class you know and like it was hard for her. And I told her, I told Miss Jen, I love that you did that for her because she needs to have challenges, you know? And since then she rides one and the other, you know, now she's, you know, she can, she's open. And I like that because, you know, you get stuck in one and then you know that the horse is nice or the horse is doing this and, you know, you need challenges in your life. That's how his life is going to be later. So I think that was a really, really good one on her that she did on, on Isabella because, you know, that's the life that she's dealing with right now, you know, challenges and changes, you know, and all that. So did you notice that she was more able to deal with challenges like with her brothers or with something else or school or something that afterwards was, did it transfer? Yes. Yeah. Because she, she will get frustrated. Like, let's say that someone was bullying her at school because it happened and she will be like upset and then she will, okay, I think she will calm down. So it helped her how to deal with real life, you know, like, okay, I have the horse and she will think she has a picture on magic on her phone everywhere you know she has horses everywhere so she will look at it or I'll, she, she will get frustrated i'll send her a picture like she was writing and then she'll remember and then she will come back to normal you know that Great. i'm telling you that's her medicine miss jen <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing brian, brian how about you yes of course um probably the easiest one is that frustration point the she my daughter likes to have the reins way back and it confuses each individual horse and they all respond differently and so it's very interesting because jen walks her through she has to learn that different horses have different personalities where to place her hands and have those reins in a certain position so that they're communicating clearly but that certainly has transferred to home because what she's done is now i see her where before she would get frustrated while riding, she is calming herself down during the ride. Then when we get home, she's articulating her thoughts really well. So where I might get confused as to what she's trying to tell me or her mother, uh, she spends the time to try to articulate bear, better how she wants to communicate with us. So it definitely transfers and dealing with the frustration is a big life skill that these horses and this training is helping her deal with. That's amazing. That's, that's it, huge. How old is your daughter, Brian? She's eight. Wow. That's really impressive because just self-management and, you know, emotional control and articulating your frustrations is a big, I have a nine-year-old, so I get it. <laughs> but <Yes. laughs> it's a big, if they can figure it out, then it's, you know, a big a big accomplishment. I haven't managed it yet. So Jen, I may be <laughs> down there with your program. <laughs> wow. That just sounds like, you know, not only helping each person deal with specific challenges they may have that maybe they show up at Equihope with, I have this issue, but transferring to life in general 
I mean, it's really a school of life through it's the life, whole thing. life skill. Yeah. yeah. And absolutely. We are all about life skills. So I always tell the writers, and this is what I was taught too. It's never the horse's fault. It's always the human. Either you manage the situation or you manage the horse or you manage your communication or you manage yourself. But the human has the big brain. And I will tell the kids all the time, your brain is huge. They have the brain the size of an acorn. Give them a break. Be a good leader. And so they kind of are so like, wow, what a concept. I'm the leader. And it's my fault if things go wrong. So that's a huge amount of responsibility, but kids, they do need it. And you talk about people not having access to animals. I think as animal husbandry is just not there anymore, but farm kids are taught that really young. They're taught to be responsible, um, manage situations. They have chores, they have responsibilities, and that is so powerful. So one thing that's really neat about Isabella is she comes back and she gives back. So she supports lessons and helps us on the weekdays and weekends and whenever she's available and with camp and her give back has been so powerful. She's made such an impact and um, she, along with a lot of teens, and if you follow our social media, which is Equihope NTX on Instagram, we talk about teen empowerment a lot. We talk about youth leadership a lot. It's important. It's our investment into the future. If we are not mentoring, then we're not helping. So every one of us is responsible to mentor a youth and help them through and help them become a good citizen, teach them responsibility because they'll be happier and healthier, but they'll also make the world a better place. And I just can't listen to people complain about youth. I'm like, well, you obviously, if you're complaining about youth, you're not invested at all because everyone I know that takes the time to work with young people, they don't agree. They think the future is bright and that kids are amazing. That was incredibly well put. I don't know whether you just thought of that on the spur of the moment or practice that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it. No, I feel no, I, and I'm, 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 I'm with you too. If you'll sit down with a kid and spend some time and read a book and do some activities, then suddenly you know that the world is going to be okay. You know, it's just, and it, it's what we tend or what we allow ourselves to invest in, you know, uh, positive or negative. Wow. And it's so true what you said about giving back. It's a true gift that you are giving by teaching these kids that they do need, you know, we always talk about you should give back, you should serve, you should, you know, we talk about it as adults, you talk about it in general, but teaching it in theory is a lot different than actually giving a kid a, an opportunity to do it. And, you know, I think kids in general want to do that, but they don't always have an opportunity and sometimes they're afraid to ask, but kids young, you know, I think young kids, especially start all kids start out wanting to be generous and kind and helpful. And it's those of us who are older that probably ruin them, but you know, you're giving them such, you know, not, it, it started as therapy, right? Equihope is therapy. It's community, but what a gift that you're giving the community and families and kids are most of the people who come for therapy kids. Uh, no, we have adults too. Um, we have uh, diagnoses ranging from autism to cerebral palsy to trauma. Uh, we really have a little bit of everybody and we have clients as small as four on up to adults. So um, with that, what's fantastic is because we're so focused on building the community feeling that they all get to interact with each other as much as possible. Now, I do have some clients with strong behaviors and we do create privacy for them so that their families have respect and understanding. But for the most part, it's it's really a group effort uh, that preteens and teens come and give back Um they can help with teaching the younger riders how to groom the horses to um, setting up the obstacle course. Uh, so Isabella, she's a part of a fantastic team of teens that they help with the camps. And we teach a lot of independence in the camps. And I tell these preteens and teens that are helping out, I call them the leaders. They're not to lift a thing. They're to learn to teach others how to 
how to do everything. So they need to develop their management and delegation skills. And we talk about that. And if I see them doing for others who are fully capable, I'm like, nope, you're supposed to talk them through it, not do it yourself. Because you that's leadership. Leadership is getting it done. It doesn't mean that you do everything. It means you share and teach and talk people through it and help them through it. And you manage teams. And if you can manage teams, you will have success in life. That's Jen, fabulous. If, if someone, because we're about to run out of time here, if someone, if it's resonated with them in regards to a family member or a friend, uh, what should they do now? What's the next step? How do they, how do they get in touch with Equine e e Hope? Sure. They can go to our website. It's equihope.org. So it's E-Q-U-I-H-O-P-E dot O-R-G. Our social media, our Instagram is really fun. We have a lot of fun with it. We celebrate a lot of writer accomplishments and it is Equihope, N is in Nancy, T is in Tom, X, so North Texas, ntx.org, Equihope, ntx.org. So you are, so give us a little bit before we wrap up. Um, how big are you? How many people do you have that come weekly for lessons or training or camp? It really depends, but 35 to 75 per week. We also provide equine experiences. Now in 2023, we provided almost 2000 equine experiences to the community. We worked hard and we're committed to not having a wait list. We're committed to meeting the need. We are uh, really, really aggressive with our scheduling and that we try to get everyone in and it is it's a massive undertaking, but we have a wonderful team and we have wonderful support. We have amazing clients and it's been an inspirational journey since our founding. And a little bit about our founding, uh, Brandon and Kent and Marge and I always wanted to do a center together. When we met, we talked about it and we finally got the opportunity. It was like the planets aligned and we've hit the ground running. So we're definitely, definitely uh, open to receiving new clients. We for sure want to meet the need in our community and we for sure are working on grant writing and scholarship and fundraising. Um, we're a wonderful, worthy investment. If you have a grant opportunity, we would love to talk with you about that. We want to make scholarships a priority and uh, the horses are expensive. Whoa. So <laughs> I can tell you that there was a drought in 2022, 2023, kind of that winter. And we had to order hay from Canada because there was nothing here. And so we are looking at this coming winter, it just being just as hard because of all the fires they had in North Texas and a lot of the hay fields are gone. So um, we definitely always need help with hay. So Thank you so much for this opportunity. We're so grateful to be here. Well, it's been wonderful. And as you all heard listening and watching, if you want to get a hold, we will post in the show notes, the website and social media. If you live in the North Texas area and are a person or know a person who would like to participate, you can definitely get in touch with them. And if you have resonated with anything said today, I encourage you to find an organization in your area that could help because horses are magical. I can tell you from my whole life experience with them. I strongly agree. They help with pretty much infinite number of things. Um, and so look them up. If you feel like donating, if you feel like participating, I'm assuming you have volunteer help we do. as well. We love our volunteers. We have awesome volunteers. And so definitely if you are interested in learning more about equine therapy, please reach out to us. Fabulous. So definitely give us um, feedback on this episode. If you've loved it, like we have, give us a five-star review and follow us because we'll be back with more, right, Steve? And it, that sounded like a threat when you said, we'll be back. I know. <laughs> we'll be back. It's a promise, uh, it's not a threat. <laughs> Jennifer, Brian, Alejandra, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for, for, for sharing and hopefully in, inspiring people that are listening or watching to uh, pick up the phone or whatever and maybe get some help for somebody that they love because it 
sounds like it is truly life-changing and life-affirming. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us and tune in again next week. We'll be back with another view from the summit. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on another adventure here at the View from the Summit. And make sure you tune in next week. We'll be back with another View from the Summit. Take care. This program is made possible by Summit Animal Health. If you have a dog, cat, or horse with mobility issues, Summit Animal Health has the all-natural, drug-free solution that comes with a satisfaction guarantee. Summit Animal Health products are used by Olympic gold medal equestrians, leading rodeo stars, professional dog trainers and handlers, and people just like you. Whether working companion or couch potato, Summit Animal Health can keep them moving. Check them out online at summitanimals.com. New to Summit? Use the code VIEW15 and receive 15% off your initial order. We'll see you next week for another view from the summit.